All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab's in the house. And today I've got the Benchmade Anthem here with me. Uh, as usual, we're gonna analyze the look, the sound, and the feel of this one. But first of all, let's just do a quick size comparison up against some uh, popular models. Here is your uh, Spyderco PM2, and this is your Spyderco PM3 right over here. Um, let's throw in a couple of big boys, like this is uh, Chris Reeve Knives uh, Umnum Zan, and uh, we're gonna throw in in the mix also like a large Sebenza 21, just to give you, you know, an idea of uh, how big this guy is and another two big boys we have a snafu from custom knife factory and a shirogorov custom division f95 so uh, let's also add throw in the mix you know of course bench made 940 so as you can see tiny bit smaller than the anthem all right guys let's get started uh, uh, checking out the look so uh, this is uh, this is a pretty neat design, I have to say. Uh, this is uh, part of the Benchmade uh, Blue class, so you know the uh, higher end uh, models they are offering. And actually, this is the most expensive of that line because uh, yeah, this guy is not cheap. Um, it's made in the U.S. All right, it's uh, it has a pretty cool uh, chevron-like pattern over here and in the clip as well, and. Um, it's nice. I mean, it's nicely milled. Um, this is, a, you know, a, an, an integral knife. Uh, so pretty different from your, uh, you know, classic knife, you know, with couple slabs uh, screwed them together. And this is just an integral uh, handle, which means it, it has been milled out from a single billet of titanium. So they just, you know, milled out the inside uh, from one big chunk of titanium. And that, you know, it means it's gonna be more expensive, it's gonna take more time than just uh, milling out a couple of scales. So you need uh, to go slower, you need more precision, and uh, yeah, you need some skills as well. Um, so also this, uh, this frame, this handle has been um, like weather bronze anodized, if you can see. And um, you know there there are no um, straight lines in this knife. So this is you know gently curved. There's a curve over here. Look at this. Another one over here going up. All curves except for this you know straight arrow like lines and the lines in the back. There are nice divots. But everything uh, you know uh, it's pretty rounded off and um, overall quite pleasant. I have to say. Um, so. You see the handle has this nice finger groove over here. Uh, there's, uh, you know, nice chamfering going on all around the edges, but they didn't chamfer the inside here. So uh, just remember that. Um, this is an axis lock, all right? So the lock, the locking mechanism is uh, uh, achieved through this um, springy uh, axis, of course, like it's like a pivot over here. Uh, it's uh, there's like a spring on the inside which pushes the axis uh, lock in that way. So basically, it's like a pivot being pushed that way into a groove of the at the end uh, of the um, of the blade, like in the tang of the blade, right over here. So the the spring just pushes this up and prevents the blade from moving. You pull this down and you release the blade for uh, to get into the closing position. There's another notch right there. When you release it, the blade stays in place. So it's a pretty clever uh, design. Uh, this axis lock has a little different. Um, button. It's like a cog shape, like a gear shaped uh, um, uh, button over here, which, you know, it's the same as the thumb stud, but it's uh, pretty different uh, than, for example, your Benchmade 940. See? Quite different. This is more rounded off. All right, and this is a little bit, you know, more detail right over there. So nice, uh, nice little detail. Uh, if you check the uh, screws, uh, this is basically using using one T10 Torx bit screw, uh, screw over here for the pivot, and that's it. I mean, yes, you have like a, a T6 for the for the pocket clip screws, and 
look at this you have a t5 over here so these screws are keeping in place the uh, spring holder for the axis lock right in the back so if you want to disassemble and maintain this guy yeah i mean good luck with that i i wouldn't do it i'm, I'm not that adventurous of course like removing the pivot uh, screw is going to be like a breeze you just take this out blades uh, popping off you clean it out lube it up uh, toss it back in screw that up and you know you're done you're good to go it's pretty straightforward simple and pretty easy uh, to do so pretty pretty good uh, uh, you know good good side you know the the easy of uh, you're gonna have you know the easiness you're gonna have in maintaining this blade um, the screws are made of steel you know are, the pivot is protruding just a little bit these guys are protruding a little bit more uh, pivot is not captive it's like a bushing pivot you so you it means you have one screw here another one here and like a cylinder uh, like right in between uh, you know the, the the blade basically um, so also the pocket clip it's nice uh, i mean it's made of titanium it, it has um, uh, you know the same pattern which is doubled you know like uh, for every uh, milled groove in the handle you get two in the in the clip so it gives a little nice contrast you know over here it's a uh, tip up only but it's reversible so you can install it also on the other side if you prefer so it's gonna make it uh, like ambidextrous um, the only only thing I have against this clip is look at this it's a little bit sitting up high and, and this is a new one so um, that's I mean of course it's easily fixable you can bend it back to your uh, um, you know if as much as you like but it, it sh I think it shouldn't be like this when you buy a uh, over $400 uh, knife uh, but overall you know clip retention it's all right you know it's uh, it's not super springy but it's it's okay uh, but also you know you're gonna notice that there is no lanyard hole whatsoever so uh, no way you're gonna be able to to use a lanyard in this guy uh, in the back you know there's no backspacer of course this is uh, an integral handle so it means you know there's no backspacer just one solid piece and you're gonna have these uh, divots you know milled out and with these um, grooves you know uh, alongside the, the back of the blade this is going to give you a little bit more jimping let's say and of course a little bit more character because it's going to be unmistakable a bench made anthem if you're going to look at this guy you know from the back so pretty interesting um pretty interesting design um so yeah make sure when you pick this one that there's no quality check issues because i had a couple uh, that were not like perfectly centered as you can see this is dead center so i, I really appreciate when i spend that much money uh, for my blade to be like right there you know um let's check the blade because the blade it's pretty interesting uh, this is a 3.5 inch blade. It's uh, steel is pretty high end. It's this guy's is CPM. I don't know if you can see right over here. It's uh, uh, 20 CV. So pretty, pretty high uh, up there in the realm of uh, premium steels. Um, the, this, the, the blade has like a, a fine tumble finish. But if you check closely, you probably can still appreciate the milling grooves of um, on the blade so on the grind so but the you know overall the finish is quite reflective i like it um this is a nice drop point blade and you might uh, think that's you know you know what i mean you know this is what you might think um so it's nice it has a nice design it's um you know the th uh, stock thickness is right i mean it's not too thick it's not too thin the tip it it's a it, it's thin yeah you're not gonna be doing some heavy pride job with this tip over here because it's quite fine but still i, I like it. it it's it's pretty nice uh this is just a flat grind all right it's not hollow and um it just gets up to here uh, up to this line if you check uh, you know the grind symmetry on both sides it's pretty good uh, as well as the edge symmetry so which means that the edge height is 
pretty consistent a little bit here thins down a tiny bit right over there as you can notice but yeah it's overall pretty good uh, there's um, you know nice you know gentle belly over here and just flat up to the sharpening choil which is right over here good job as you can see the plunge grind arches down inside the handle revealing how thin behind the edge this guy is so not the thinnest but it's it's damn good um, the plunge grind you know goes right inside the handle uh, thus like um, hiding the ricasso from from the side so uh, that's another feature you, you like you, you don't see any jimping uh, up top here there's just a little bit of like thumb ramp let's call it like that but just a nice uh, spine crowning going on it's not as nice as your sebenza spine crowning so check it out so Benza is more rounded off in the spine than the than the Benchmade, but still they did a pretty good job uh, for, for for the spine over here. Uh, you have a nice gentle angle, you know, going down to create this this pretty attractive uh, drop point blade. Uh, there's no no swedge uh, going on, no fuller. Uh, they're just, you know, a thumb stud, uh, which is going to give you like another option of uh, for, to deploy your blade and just a, you know, classic bench made billboarding for the model, which is the 781 right over here and 20 CV, which is going to remember you which kind of steel you're going to you're using. Um, so Let's analyze a little bit uh, the noise because this this knife makes uh, a pretty distinctive sound. Like you can uh, you can deploy this in in few ways, but let's let's use the thumb stud and let's hear what is going on. Okay, so that's the opening sound. All right, so this this guy is running on bearings, uh, and in fact, you actually can hear. You see the bearings uh, rubbing up against the titanium handle. So that's something. Uh, it's like a whirring sound. Okay. And then you have, of course, the axis lock. Okay. If you just pull it back and you don't uh, let the axis lock interact with the tang of the blade, this is the noise you're going to hear. So a little bit uh, less loud, you know, than than this because you also have this guy rubbing up against the tang and the bearing rubbing up against the um, handle so that's the noise you're gonna have when deploying the blade with the with, with your thumb stud so it's like a, it's not like really loud but it's like a, a rich clack i would say so it's pleasant but i would say it's not the best uh, noise i've ever heard like for example this is a that's a very different sound all right, uh, so this is sound that I will write home about. Probably the, not this guy, but the sound when closing, you know, it's like this. It's very nice. It's muffled. It's like a percussive, uh, resounding clang. I, I like it. And, you know, because of the nature of the handle, the, the noise, the sound, it's going to get trapped on the inside, therefore, like creating some resounding effect when you close the blade and it's nice because yeah you got the tang of the blade hitting up against this axis lock which is going to create this very interesting sound so i like this one um let's analyze a little bit the feeling when you are holding this blade because uh, it's it's quite good and by the way sorry about this band-aid but you know uh when you play with knives yeah you you know what i mean um so this this knife weighs in at uh, 3.66 ounces and um you know there's a not really incredible hot spot uh, beside the tip of the clip right over here i feel it a little bit um, but overall it's it's not sharp i mean the edges are contoured pretty nicely uh, 
but, but there's no jimping going on. So you're not going to have much of a traction for your thumb up here. Uh, but overall, the grip is good because the, the, I mean, the, the, there's this finger groove over here. It's going to accommodate nicely your index and it's going to serve a little bit as a guard, you know, preventing your handle to slide down that way. So it's nice. Um, you can like uh, reverse grip like this handle is the right length. So it's going to be it's going to be good. Uh, but you cannot really choke up on the blade because there's no finger choil. It's just a sharpening choil. So I don't advise you to uh, use the your index like over here. I mean, you could, but this area is sharp. So uh, don't. Um, overall, the handle feels solid because, of course, this is an integral handle. So there's no play that it doesn't move. It's it feels like truly solid. You know that this is not going to go anywhere. Uh, overall, the texture, it's nice because, you know, they milled out these uh, Chevron uh, grooves, these hero like grooves, which are going to give you more traction, of course, because naturally, you know, this finish this this texture like if it wouldn't be here it would uh, it would be more slippery also in the back you've got some jimping going on nice divot so this all um, milling out this pattern going on will create for sure some good traction in your hand and you know it's not gonna let your knife uh, slip away so I, I appreciate that fit and finish it's all right, because uh, I mean, it's not perfect. Uh, I had to go through three to get, uh, you know, this one uh, because uh, the other two I found, it, they weren't like perfectly center. This one has this little detail, you know, that's bugging me, but it's easy. It's an easy fix. So uh, you, I would suggest you to check out uh, your, um, your sample before, you know, spending this much uh, money. Uh, but overall, it's well built. I mean, guys, there, there are no gaps. It's um, it's nicely done. Uh, it's uh, it, it's a it's a beautiful piece as well. There is no blade play. Uh, the only thing with Benchmade is that you need to tune, uh, to fine tune the, the strength uh, with which you're gonna tighten your pivot because a little bit more or a little bit less will create either like a stiff blade or a little bit of blade play. So you need just to dial that in, use some blue Loctite and boom, you're good to go. You're gonna have a pretty, a pretty nice knife. Uh, action right over here. So very, very nice. Also, for example, something that I'd like not really good in the feeling department is when you're going to slide in and out this guy from your pocket, because uh, look at the, the uh, clip uh, ramp. And for example, check out this clip ramp. So you see the angle is much more acute on this one, which means this is going to slide into your pocket like a boss. Whereas this one, it's being more obtuse. It's going to be a little bit tougher. You're going to meet some more resistance uh, uh, with this one. Uh, but let's check out the action because it's very interesting. I mean, this is the action of this guy. It's, I would say, phenomenal. It's deployment speed. It's super fast. You, you, you can do like the slow way to hand Hands, yeah, sure. But you can do, you know, the thumb flick. You can do, you know, like, oops, sorry. You can do your spidey flick. You can do uh, a deployment just by releasing the axis lock. So you, at the moment you pull the axis lock down, the blade is freely spinning around the pivot, you see? So just by pulling this down. So basically you can, you can just do something like that as well as closing back. So you have to pull it down. And as soon as the bay hits uh, the, 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 um, the pin right there, the stop pin, you just release it and boom, the blade is locked. So you can like spend hours just by fidgeting, you know, opening and closing this blade. Very, very nice. Also, another thing I like to do is just to hold the blade like this uh, in the open position and you just pull the uh, axis lock back and boom, the blade closes. Uh, on it by itself just by the weight of the blade pull going back and it's a beautiful feeling you you get uh, when fidgeting with this blade you're gonna have a little bit of finger sore because this button over here it's not like well rounded off or chamfered but it's nothing like too crazy because you're gonna be rewarded uh, you know with the smoothness and the you know the the fidgety factor that this blade uh, will give to you so 
you're gonna love it. Uh, something also to notice is that uh, this is um, this is running on bearings, all right, ball bearings right on the inside, and it's not a flipper. So it's a nice feature, something that you find also, for example, in the Nirvana. This is a custom, but also uh, you know the the Spyderco Nirvana, you know, and the Pison as well, and and other uh, other knives are uh, you know gonna be non-flipper uh, running on bearings. So something that I truly appreciate. Um, also, like the tip of the blade is pretty recessed down. There's no way you're gonna be able to touch that. So it's pretty safe and there's no rattling going on. Everything stays put together. And um, I mean, the, it's a nice feeling also, like when, when you close the blade, it's, uh, you know, you just uh, uh, easily uh, pull the, the lock back and uh, you know, the blade is just gonna go, look at this. It's very, very smooth. There's no lock stick. And of course you have a nice free fall action, guillotine shutdown uh, kind of thing. And you also have a pretty nice detent suction effect. Look at this. Up here, the blade is gonna get sucked in by these um, uh, by the spring uh, present in the axis lock, which by the way, it's uh, different than your uh, Benchmade 940. Or 943. So this is this has like two Omega Springs, which are not infamous, but uh, you know they might uh, uh, they might break under some serious distress. Whereas this one is just like a coil spring right over there, so much sturdier uh, than the other one. Uh, you also have some like if you don't release the the lock uh, back on time, you're gonna have you know this kind this bouncy effect, which sometimes is nice, sometimes it's not. So it's just a matter of taste. But yeah, there you have it. Uh, this was my review of the Benchmade Anthem. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.